Out to you, Jenna, choir. Thank you so much. This is so beautiful. I'm just so honored to have this grand choir here today. There's so many of you. How wonderful that is. And my soul sings out to each one of you for showing up today and saying yes to being here, to being in the presence of the divine, which is the truth of who you are, the truth of who each one of us are. And again, Kaleem, thank you for that introduction. I was like, wow, who's he talking about? <laughs> oh, I think he's talking about me. Um, thank you very much. I feel so blessed and so honored again. And it's so good to be back in my spiritual home here in Alaska. I have the opportunity to uh, have another home, which is in Hawaii, and I get to travel back and forth. And, and yet when I come home here, my soul is home. And this is where I grew up, in this, the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living, like Kaleem was saying. And I went through some tumultuous times and, and I kept reaching for the light. And, um, and today I look out in front of me and I see the light in each one of you. So thank you for being here. Thanks for shining your light. And for those of you watching today on our YouTube channel, we welcome you and thanks for pushing play. And I hope today <laughs> that you hear something that reaches your soul and that your soul feels a little bit more home today also. So Reverend Don shared with me, gosh, several weeks ago, maybe even a couple of months ago, the theme of today's topic. And today's topic, the theme that we're talking about this month in June, is around empowerment. And so I do, did what I do, which is to, and I'm a walker, you're just going to have to follow me with that camera. I do what I did, which is pray, and um, I began praying about empowerment. I'm like, oh, what does that mean to me? I'm feeling into it, and I'm praying some more, and I'm praying while I'm walking, and I'm praying while I'm singing, like the song talked about, and I'm praying, and nothing's coming. And um, I'm still praying, and I'm like, I'm ready. I'm ready for the enlightenment. I'm ready for the download from spirit to tell me what I'm supposed to be talking about on Sunday. And so last week, it's early in the morning, and I'm having some quiet time, and I'm reading. And I thought, oh, you know, I'm feeling like I might want to read something new. And so I get up out of my bed and I go to my bookshelf and I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking. And I'm like, oh, there's a book that I ordered six months ago. Maybe I'll read it. And my friend Anne, who's actually in the audience, thank you for being here today, Anne, she's been pounding me for years now. You know Brene Brown? You should be reading Brene Brown. She's this great speaker and, and she's got a books and I think you'd really, you know, resonate with her. And, and so I ordered off of Amazon. I pushed play like six months ago and I ordered this book and I put it on my shelf. Well, last week, I'm still wondering what I'm going to be talking about. And I pulled it off my shelf and I open up the book and in the very first chapter, she talks about this idea of courage. And she talks about this idea of compassion. And she talks about this idea of connection. And I'm like, those words are really familiar to me. Where have I heard those words before? And suddenly it goes click, click, click. And I'm thinking visioning. I was visioning earlier this year for the New Year's Visioning Teller Retreat with Ray Jordan, who's a good friend of ours. If you don't know her, she's with Higher Vision Institute down in Alameda, California. And every year she does this visioning re retreat for two days around the new year. And it's an opportunity to go deep. And so I visioned for two days, eight times a day. That's eight hours, my friends. Eight hours a day I was visioning for two days. And I went back and I looked at my notes and all over my notes were the words courage, compassion, and connection. I'm like, hey, did she take those from me? <laughs> and I thought to myself, courage, compassion, and connection. If I am living in courage, if I am living in compassion, if I am living in connection, then truly I am living a life of empowerment. And so the title of my talk today is Recipe for Empowerment. A dash of courage, a sprinkle of compassion, a pinch of connection, mix together and witness the rise of an empowered life. So let's get started. So courage, the core root of courage is Core, excuse me, the root of courage is core, C-O-R, it really is. And that means, the Latin for that is the heart, the heart. And originally, courage meant to speak one's mind by the telling of one's heart. That's what it originally meant. And when I was reading Brene Brown, she was talking about courage in today's world. What we, the way we think about courage is about being brave or being heroic 
are putting one's life on the line. And we need bravery and we want heroism and sometimes we need to do those things to live in courage. But then she talked about this other thing and she called it ordinary courage. And I was like, what is ordinary courage? And she talked about instead of putting one's life on the line, she talked about putting one's vulnerability on the line. And I was like, oh, vulnerability on the line. What does that mean? What does that feel like? And I was going to share a story with you just now about me putting my vulnerability on the line. But it wasn't really. It was a little bit about being brave and when I learned how to drive and I was 17 and it was really funny. It was a great story. Um, but in this very now moment, I'm receiving something else. And so, hang on. <laughs> I was here last week in the center and I was getting a new key for the doors from Reverend Don and it was just last Thursday. And I walked in and I sat down at his office and he was sitting behind his desk and he said, how's it going? And I said, you know, it's, it's not going. It's not going very well. And he said, what do you mean it's not going very well? And I'm like, you know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little bit nervous. I'm feeling like I'm not the one to be doing the talk on Sunday. I mean, just because I can speak into a microphone doesn't mean I should, <laughs> right? And so he's, and I'm just like, you know, maybe this isn't mine to do, and what do I have to really say? And, you know, and it's, it's, it's the congregation, and we're supposed to be rising up and, and enlightening people and, and sharing and, and changing and growing together. And, and I was just like panicking. And he came around the desk, and he sat down in a chair in front of me, and suddenly started praying with me. And I'm like, I guess we're praying right now. <laughs> and so I closed my eyes, <laughs> and I opened up my hands, and I opened up my heart. And I listened. <coughs> and I listened to him speak the words of truth for me through him. I listened to him speak about this thing called strength that he believed that I had. <laughs> I listened to him speak about the ability for me to just allow the spirit to move through me and if it was moving through me then perhaps you might catch it and it might move through you and so I said yes to that prayer and I felt different and I felt a change come over me and I felt vulnerable but yet I felt strong and you know, the other week I was talking to the children. I get an opportunity to be with the children when I'm here, and I love them so much. And I was talking to them about courage. And I said, what does courage mean to you? And there was this young man, Lyric, and some of you know him. And he said to me, courage means to me that if somebody at my school is being mean and, and somebody is bullying him, then it means that I can go up and say, that's not nice. You need to stop that. In his words, he said other words that were his language. And, but he was being vulnerable because in that moment, it's not always easy to be the one that says, hey, we need to stop that. We need to rise up and use our voices. We need to have courage and rise up to the occasion. And he rose up to the occasion. And he's done so many times. And then the other day, we were coming out here and we bring the children out and you'll see them this afternoon. We bring them out and they talk in a microphone and I'm always encouraging them. I'm like, you can do it. And they're like, no, I don't want to do it. And, um, and there's this one boy and he's always the, no, 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 somebody else. But two weeks ago, he spoke into the microphone. His name is Tennyson and he had courage and he was vulnerable and it was okay and afterwards he was proud and he walked <laughs> and he walked around and his mother came up to me afterwards and she said wow wow he spoke into the microphone i'm like yes he did and so friends i'm asking each one of us how are we putting our vulnerability on the line how are we rising up in courage just be with that. <sighs> compassion. Compassion, oh compassion. How I never knew you until I knew me. 
I don't know about each of you, but I come from a family of more than just one, although I always thought there should just be me. But there wasn't. There was other people in my family, and they were brothers, and they were younger than me, and I have two of them. I have a brother who's four years younger than me, and I have another brother who is... 14 years younger than me and so I grew up with this role of being the babysitter, of being the responsible one, of being the one who was mature and who took care of things, of being the caretaker. And that role followed me. It followed me into my teen years when I was in high school and friends came to me and would tell me secrets and so I was a secret keeper and I had a lot of secrets. I'm not going to say them on YouTube <laughs> just in case you're watching all my high school friends. Um, and, and I was the keeper of you know a lot of people's, they were going through challenges and they felt compelled to tell me and so I just listened. Um, and that was fine and good. And that caretaker role followed me into my career. I'm a teacher. I'm a special educator. But it also did some other things to me and it, it followed me in a way into my life where I was caretaker for so many other people, I forgot to take care of myself. I always put somebody else first. And so this idea came out of me not in the most positive way. And I speak openly, I speak openly in public about my journey of recovery. And I speak openly about it because it is important for me to speak and know the truth of who I am. And if I can know the truth of who I am, then perhaps you might hear something for yourself. And so the last time I was speaking from this pulpit, I spoke about this beloved, this beloved, my beloved, called Angie. Her name is Angie. And I shared a story. And for those of you who weren't here, the title of the talk was Dancing with the Divine, and for those of you who are watching on YouTube, and for those of you who want to watch that talk, I'm plugging our YouTube channel, you can go and YouTube it. And I bring up Angie because she was the person who taught me about compassion for myself. She was the person who asked me to look at my heart so that I could get to the heart of the matter and see what was underneath to see what was the matter. And she was this person who guided me into professional, to seek out professional counsel. And I was like, oh, there's professional people out here in the world who could help me. Perhaps I will ask for help, because it's not what I did. I didn't ask for help. I've, I was the, of the mindset that I've got this. Do you know those people who are like, I've got this people, I've got this, I can do this. We're all that strong people. And I wasn't at that time. I wasn't strong enough. And I, so I sought professional help. And the professional help people said, perhaps you might look at treatment. And I thought, oh, I don't know. Maybe I should look at treatment. I don't really know. I'm not doing this very well on my own. So I sought treatment, and I went to a treatment center, and I learned about myself, and I learned about the addiction that I have, which was the addiction of alcohol, and I learned that it was a disease, and that's all good and fine, and that's for another story, another time, but those, that treatment center guided me to the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous, and you know what, the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous, you know where they guided me to? They guided me to spiritual counsel. And they said, perhaps you might look at your spirituality. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means. And guess where I landed? <laughs> I landed right here. The Alaska Center for Spiritual Living. How did that even happen? I don't know. But here I am. This was like a long time ago, like 12 years ago. I opened up the door one day and I'm like, hey, there's a class that's being taught here. It's called Foundations. And perhaps I'll take it because my friend Raven, Reverend Rachel Hollander said, you know, it's kind of a great class and I think you might like it. And so I did. And through taking that class and then through walking in these doors and sitting when you're, where you're sitting, I learned about the truth of who I was, which was I was the light of the divine. And I was like, I don't know what that means, but I learned about this thing called compassion. Compassion for myself. Now, we have a slide. Somewhere's my slide person, Joan. Pima Chodron, she's an American Buddhist, and she says, compassion is not about the relationship between the healer or the wounded. It is the relationship between equals. And she further goes on to say that only when we can know our own darkness can we then be there in the darkness with others. And, and compassion becomes real. It becomes real when we recognize our shared humanity. 
When we recognize our shared humanity, compassion is not about the wounded and the healer. When I came here last weekend and I was talking to Reverend Don, he wasn't looking at me from the wounded, I'm the wounded, and he was the healer. He was looking at me through our shared compassion, our shared humanity. He knew the truth for himself and he was being the mirror so that I could see myself in his mirror. And I was like, wow, that's an awesome mirror. I was looking at me through him. And I had some compassion for myself. And friends, I just ask us, how are we showing up as compassion for each other and for ourselves? How is that looking for us? Can we put down the, I've got to do it all? Can we put down the, I have to be the one in control? Can we reach out? Can we seek counsel? Can we tap in, tune in, and take a deeper dive into what our souls are calling us to be? I say yes to that. I say yes to that. I'm going to show you a video in a moment that really touched my heart earlier this week. And, um, but first, I moved to um, Anchorage several years ago now um, from Fairbanks. Can I just tell you it was a little cold up in Fairbanks and so I was moving south. <laughs> moving south to find the heat. And look where I landed. I landed right here in Anchorage. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. And I didn't have a job. <laughs> and so I did some waitressing because that's what I knew how to do and that's how I'd gotten through college. And so I was this college graduate and I had a degree in, special, or excuse me, in social work. And um, but somehow, some way, I got a job. And I got a job with the Anchorage School District. I'm like, hey, <laughs> I work for the Anchorage School District and I was a teacher assistant. And I walked into my classroom on the very first day and the Anchorage School District job that I had was called the ACT program, Adult Community Transition. And we worked with these delightful beings um, and they are people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And I was like, wow. They are really trusting me. <laughs> I'm like going to be in this classroom with some really amazing people. And so I went in my very first day of school and <clears throat> I watched and I listened and I interacted. And about halfway through the day, the teacher comes up to me and she's like, wow, how long have you been doing this line of work? <laughs> I'm looking at her. I'm like, uh, um, what do you mean? She's like, well, how long have you been in this field? And I looked at my watch and I'm like, three hours and 45 minutes to be exact. <laughs> like, I'm not. And uh, she's like, no. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and um, she said, you're a natural. And what I know that I know that I know is that I felt in that moment this deep sense of connection. This deep sense of connection. And I felt that same connection when I walked into that foundations class not so many, okay, maybe so many years ago. So many years ago. And I felt that same connection when I further came into the sanctuary and I listened to the music being played. And I felt that connection when I heard all of you sing today. And my heart was opened up a little bit wider. And I feel that connection as I look out into this room right here, right now. And Pima Cho excuse me, not Pima Chodron, but our, the, the wonderful Brene Brown says this about connection. She defines it as the energy that exists between people when they feel seen, when they feel heard and valued, and when they can give and receive without judgment, and when they derive sustenance and strength from a relationship when we can give and receive without judgment and when we derive sustenance from a relationship. That is that feeling of connection. I felt that feeling of connection when I was having dinner with my beloved friend Anne, who's sitting in the audience today, um, just this last week. I feel that connection as I look out and I see the beloved Shirley Mae sitting in our audience and I think, that is a powerhouse woman right there. I feel that connection. And I felt that connection when I watched the video I'm about to have you watch. And we're just going to watch a short few minutes of it because it's long. But I felt a connection and each one of us will experience the video in a different way today. Because we are individualized expressions of the one light. But our friends, I just watch, invite you to watch and, and to tap in and feel what your connection is and ask that question. And just crank it up a little bit. Yes, this is amazing. And this has been on YouTube, and it's yeah. been, and it was recently shown. So you may have seen it. Welcome. 
welcome. Hello. <laughs> welcome to America's Got Talent. What's your name? I'm Cody. Hi, Cody. Hi, Cody. <laughs> How old are you? I am 22 years old. <laughs> Who are you, miss? Who are you? I'm Mom. Oh, I'm hi, Tino. Mom. Hi, Tino. How are you? So, what are you going to do here for us today? I'm going to sing a song for you on the piano. I love it. Tina, tell us a little bit about Cody. Cody is blind and autistic. Oh. Wow. We found out that he loved music really early on. He listened and his eyes just went huge. And he started singing. And that's when I just, I was in tears because that's when I realized, oh my gosh, he's an entertainer. So, yeah. Through music and performing, he was able to withstand living in this world because when you're autistic, it's really hard mm -hmm. to do what everybody else does. It actually has saved his life playing music. Wow. Oh. Well, we'd love to hear you. Go for it. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> was just bawling my eyes out <laughs> when I watched it and um, and if anybody wants to watch the full eight minute video I do have it on my computer and we can watch it together afterwards and and I bring that to your attention because I felt a deep sense of connection when I when I listened to that my heart was opened a little bit wider and I see people with Kleenexes in the audience and I'm like stop the tears because I'm on here speaking <laughs> and I can't start crying on stage <laughs> And so friends, it's that, it's that sense of connection, it's that sense of compassion, it's that sense of courage, it's that sense of putting our vulnerability on the line. And so I ask you today, are you willing? Are you willing to tap in and tune in and put your vulnerability on the line? Are you willing to reach out in compassion and, and recognize our shared our shared relationship with, our, which, with each other, our shared humanity. Not that we're the wounded, not that we're the healers, because what's happening on the outside isn't necessarily what's happening on the inside. On the inside, we are one. We are divine and we are whole and wholly connected. 
We are in this place, on this place with one another for a divine and holy purpose. And that purpose is to shine. And that purpose is to rise up in love, as love, for love, for one another. And it's to do so in community. So again, friends, when we rise up in courage, when we rise up in compassion, when we rise up in connection, we are rising up in spirit. And when we rise up in spirit, we are rising up in love. And friends, I just know right here and right now, we are rising yes, up. Yes, we are. <laughs> Ashe, so it is. And he did get a golden buzzer. I don't want to root it for anybody, but gold. And I think Jenna's got a song for us. Yes. <laughs> Maybe I'll join the choir. Yes, <laughs> please do. I close my eyes. I open my heart. I take a deep breath. Let the healing start. I lift my hands. I plant my
up. <laughs> Please have a seat, but if you're able to, just rise up. Please remain standing. Because we're going to rise in prayer together this whole and holy day. What I know that I know that I know is that there is one life, one power, one present. It is the life, the power, the presence of the divine. And in this now moment, I know it is rising up in each one of us. I know it is rising up as courage. I know that we have managed to take our vulnerability and put it out there on the line and say, yes, Yes, Spirit, use me. I know that we have risen up today as compassionate beings that we see ourselves as equals in humanity. I know that this whole and holy day that we have risen up in a sense of connection and community right here in this whole and holy room and it goes out before us and it shares that love and that light in the world that we have said yes to rising up in love that we have said yes to rising up as love, that we have said yes to being the vehicles, yes friends, all of us, the vehicles of that love, that we have said yes to rising up. And so it is good as can, it is God, it can be no other way. And for this knowing and growing more each day, we just give great thanks great thanks. We release this dynamic word to that liquid loving law that always says, yes, my friends, yes, my sisters and brothers, yes, my children. And together, together, my friends, we rise up and we say, and, and so it is. Amen. Please be seated.